This is Carrie Peters Passing, the DIY Funeral Channel, where you can create amazing celebration of life ceremonies for your loved one. Hi, I'm Carrie. In today's episode, we are going to be making this tree bio urn. This urn is durable and made of coconut core, birch bark, and rice. I'm so excited to teach you how to make this urn, which has a separate compartment for your loved one's cremated remains, and a large enough area to grow the seedling of your choice, with the entire urn being able to break down in approximately three months. Let's get to work. In order to make our tree urn, the ingredients that we're going to need are going to be some rice, a blender, and some water to start. We're going to put the rice into the pot, and we're going to fill this up, and we're just going to put that on the stove and turn it to simmer for about two hours. So the next thing that we'll be needing for our tree urn is going to be a cutting board. And while I was walking my dog the other day, I found this birch bark log. The inside of this log, as you can see, is full of mulch. This is the portion of the urn that the tree will be planted in. I prefer to have about a foot in length of the actual birch bark so we're just gonna take a saw, you could also use a bread knife, and we're just gonna cut all the way around. And we're gonna separate that. And as you can see, this mulch we'll need to take out of the birch bark and we're just going to put it in this container and save it for later when we actually plant the tree. Having mulch on top of the tree will help prevent any frost if you live in Canada but as you can see that hollows out very easily if you don't have birch trees in your area, you can pick up birch bark at your local craft store, or there's a link in the description below that will allow you to order it online and it can be shipped out the next business day. We're gonna take a one gallon perennial plant pot and a plastic produce bag. We will cover the base of the pot with this produce bag. And this is what we're going to use for our form with this coconut core. Now, this coconut core you can pick up at your local garden center. They sell these individually, aside from the uh, hanging baskets that you can purchase. We want to cut out approximately five inch v-shaped strips from the sides of the core and we're going to save these strips in case we need to use them to patch anything so it's going to be a piece like that and we're going to cut three of those out from the coconut core basket All right, we're going to take this form and we're just gonna have a look here and measure to see if we have the right kind of shape and it looks just fine to me that we have this covered. So on a 15 inch core basket liner, we're going to take out three five inch pieces in the shape of a triangle. 
Our rice has been cooking into that congee type of consistency and we're going to go and check that. And this rice has already cooled. We're going to put this in the blender. And as you can see, it's almost like, like a, a soup or a porridge. And we're going to blend this until it's a yogurt consistency. And here we have a very thin paste. We're going to put this in a bowl, which I'll, I have just right under here. And we're going to pour about half of it in there. We're going to take our coconut core and we're going to stick it inside and really saturate. This will create a clear, hard glaze and it helps to hold the coconut core together as a finished product. We can just brush that on there with our hands. We're going to put our plant pot with the plastic upside down and we're going to drape this over the top. And as we do so, we're going to form it. And we're going to take a piece of string and we're just going to tie all three pieces together. And we'll just smooth out the top here. We're going to tuck in these extra pieces here. And then that gives us a triangle piece on the one side. This will all dry as kind of like a, a clear polyurethane glaze that breaks down really easily. We're going to take a second piece of string. Just move this out of the way here. And we're going to tie it on the lower end as well. This seems like it's a flimsy product right now, but when it dries and hardens, it will be incredibly durable. And a third piece of string, we're going to tie that as close to the edge as possible and nice and tight. And just like that, we're going to flip this over. These extra pieces that we cut off, we're going to put those in the bowl and we're going to put some more rice glue on top and we're going to really just saturate those and they're going to go on the inside where these, these small holes are and that will just help to make it a little bit more structurally sound. We're going to put the base side down so that this part is laying flat on the inside so that it's like, I don't know if you guys can see that, and the rice glue is going to help it to stick. So we're going to take three pieces and just draping that on the inside. We'll just go in behind there and just paint some more rice glue. And we're going to tuck in the corners of those three triangles and really push the coconut core saturated in rice glue into the center. So there is the inside and that is more than adequate enough for an adult's cremated remains, regardless of somebody's size or stature. And I'm just going to take 
a little, one extra piece and I, there's just a hole in here that came naturally when I purchased the the coconut core basket and so we're just going to touch that up and now this has no planter inside no plastic this can go into the oven and be baked at a really low temperature and you can leave it in there for about two hours and that'll dry out the rice glue. You're gonna wanna put this on some, some aluminum foil so that it doesn't stick to the pan and, uh, and you can get it off easily. So let's go ahead and do that. The other option is, is you can dry the urn outside in the sun. It's summer here and it's beautiful. If you live down south where it's incredibly hot, I'm sure it'll dry out in about a day. So now that that's been in the oven for about two hours, it should be dry. We have our coconut core rice prototype here. This is not easily broken. It's very hard. It's like a big shredded wheat. Hard as a rock, that rice glue is amazing. So now what we wanna do is we want to go in and we wanna snip these pieces with the, the of string that we've attached the rice glue with. And there, we're just gonna go in and, and pull them off. They stick pretty hard. We lost a piece there, but that's okay. And if you notice on the top that any of this is loose, you can always stitch it. This has a lot of rice glue on it, so I think we're gonna be just fine with stability here. We wanna make sure that this part of the coconut core, now that it's been set, stays dry. We're gonna take our birch bark, we're gonna set it right inside there. And you'll notice that the log is actually narrower. You have about a, a one inch gap here from the outside of the coconut core. That's great. Because what that does is it just adds that extra bit of protection for those cremated remains when you're transporting. We have two of these plant liners. We're going to cut a circle out of the center of this, which is approximately the diameter of this log. It's better if the circle is larger than the perimeter of the birch bark log. That'll allow a barrier to separate the cremated remains from the soil. Doesn't have to be a perfect circle. We're gonna put the, the birch bark back into the coconut core liner. We're gonna stuff this extra piece into here. And it's gonna really help to center the birch bark in the middle of the coconut core liner. And that holds that nice and tight. That's not going anywhere. What you can do is you can add a little bit more rice glue around the edge here, and that will prevent this top part from slipping, but we'll wanna be carrying the cremated remains from the bottom portion where the coconut core is when transporting it to the burial site. So you can bring this as it is to the funeral home and have instruct them that they can take this circle. Once the cremated remains are in, let's say I'm transferring the ashes, the funeral director is gonna give this back to you exactly like that. And we've, we've just placed it on top of the ashes. Since everything is more fabulous with ribbon, we're gonna take <clears throat> a ribbon of our choice can be any color 
Orange would look great because the tree is green, but I had this on hand. And we're just gonna tie that, and that just kind of dresses it up. You can stick a few flowers on the inside here if you're having this at the front of the chapel. It may so for planting the tree, we want to make sure that we choose a native tree that is appropriate to our zone. This might not have as much of an impact on you if you live in a warmer climate, but up here in Canada, I have decided to choose uh, a native tree called a Hascap tree. I'm going to take this tree out very carefully. We do not want to put a seedling any larger than about eight inches into this urn. This size of urn is about 16 inches in height total. The tree needs enough soil and enough time for this to break down. And we'll just set it aside here. I'm gonna use the soil from the container. And we're just gonna put this right on top. We're gonna to put our seedling in the very top of the birch bark. If you're worried about your hands, you should be wearing gloves. I'm quite rugged though, so I don't worry about things like that. And we'll just dust off some of this soil here. And here we have our birch bark coconut core tree urn. We're gonna use the mulch that was inside of, of the birch log to help winterize the tree. You can plant this in your backyard or if you're having a service at a national park, you can check with them and see what native trees are available to be planted in the park. Uh, if you had a special place at the lake or a cabin, that's a fantastic way to commemorate that person's life and plant some trees. Have a great day everyone. If you enjoyed the episode, like and subscribe, share it with your friends. This is fantastic important information that anybody who is a hands-on person or even for people that are just trying to save money and cut some costs for their funeral service. On the next episode of Carrie Peter's Passing, my standard poodle, Kimbo Slice, and I are going to teach you a step-by-step -step guide of what you need to do and information that you'll need when your loved one passes. I look forward to teaching you this right after Kimbo gets a haircut. We'll see you then.